In this video, we are going to look in details at the timeline and distribution windows and how to edit plots in these two windows. We also are going to address visual feedback and filtering in the timeline. Let's start with the LNIN dataset that is provided when you open VIMD. And we are going to start by cleaning this script here and we will define a distance between two atoms. So we're going to take those extreme atoms by using shift and left click. And then I can do a right click on one of the atom and I can go to script and click on dist1 to select the distance that will appear in the script editor. To unselect, I will use shift and click on empty space. I can obtain visual feedback and for that I just need to hover on the expression in the script editor and I will see it in the spatial view. I will now define an angle by selecting three atoms and here you can see that we have the choice between different expression but I'm going to choose this one that will evaluate this angle in all alanine residues and create a property that contain those values. And here, if I hover on top of it, you can have a visual feedback and you can see the dimension is 15, which is the number of alanine residue in my system. I can do the same thing and define a dihedral angle by selecting four atoms using the shift and, and left click. And then I can do a right click on my selection and select this dihedral angle that will be evaluated for all the alanine residues. I can get visual feedback by hovering on top of the expression. And now that I have my three properties, I will evaluate the script by pressing the button or using the shift plus enter shortcut. Now that my properties are evaluated, I can open the timeline and the distribution windows and I'm going to be able to plot my data. I can just drag and drop this one in the timeline and distribution window. In the timeline, I can do a right click on this one and I will get access to the plot option. I can choose between two types of plots, line or scatter. And for scatter, you can choose between several markers and change the size of those markers. Now I'm going to switch back to line. For the distribution, I can do a right click on this one and get access to the plotting option as well. And for plot type, I can choose between line, area and bar. And for bars, you can choose the number of beans that you want as long as it is a power of two. You can change the color and change the alpha if you want to create some transparency. I added subplots here in the distribution and timeline window and I'm going to drag now this angle, ang1 and I will drop here the 15 values and in the subplot below I'm going to drop the mean as well as the variance and the mean max value. For the distribution, I will drop the aggregated value here and I'm going to change the plot type to area. Then I'm going to decrease a bit the alpha transparency and I'm going to drop on top of it the 15 values. The distribution and timeline window are linked. So hovering on the curve in the distribution will highlight the corresponding one in the timeline and vice versa. Also, hovering in the timeline or distribution provide visual feedback in the spatial view. Here with 15 plots, having the same color might make it difficult to distinguish between them. To solve that, we can change the color type and use instead a color map. So we recommend to use Viridis or Plasma, and here I will choose Viridis. And I will do the same thing in the timeline. So there will be a color match between the lines in the timeline and in the distribution window for each value of the angle. 
And here again, we can see the linking between timeline and distribution and the visual feedback in the spatial view. So we are now going to plot the diagonal angle DH1, and I'm going to plot the 15 value as well as the aggregated. And I will switch to area and reduce a bit the transparency. So for the 15 values, we are going to use a color map with this time the plasma color map. In the timeline, I will start to remove what was plotted in this subplot and plot the diagonal angle DH1, and I will change the color map to plasma to match the distribution. For diagonal angle, because of the periodicity, we have jumps in the timeline. So if you don't like it, you might want to change the plot type from line to marker. One thing that I forgot to mention so far is that here you have access to the individual properties contained in your collective property. So you can clear all and click on individual one to display only the one you are interested in. And here again, you have visual feedback in the spatial view. So finally, we can enable filtering in the timeline and create a temporal window. So this temporal window is around the yellow line, which represents the current position in the trajectory. And we can adjust the extent of this temporal window by sliding the cursor. Enabling filtering in the timeline will create in the distribution window, a filtered distribution for all the evaluated parameters. So we are just gonna focus on the distance here and I will drop this filter distribution on top of the full distribution. And keep in mind that this filtered distribution correspond only to the part of the trajectory that extend around those two lines. So I will now focus on this part of the trajectory corresponding to a short distance between the extremities of the chain. To jump to this point, I will use Ctrl plus left click in the timeline. And now looking at the distribution, we can see the filtered distribution representing only the temporal window and showing short distances. To navigate in the timeline, you can press Ctrl and click to jump at different points of the trajectory. You can zoom in and out using scrolling. And when you are zoomed in, you can pan by clicking and dragging with the left button. Double clicking will reset the timeline to the full trajectory. The same type of navigation is used in the distribution window. 